uh, hello uh, here uh, and now I will continue with uh, my remarks uh, on the topic as I said before introduction to business immorality and corporate social irresponsibility the first uh, three remark the uh, first two remarks were first remark uh, was uh, corporate social responsibility say generally speaking the second was concerning employee corporate social uh, responsibility not just employees but uh, customers buyers etc and this uh, third one is about corporate social responsibility of managers uh, within this general, in fact, general, quite general topic, I will discuss only the idea, uh, the models, and the practices of leadership. Particularly, I will supply kind of hunch, kind of intuition uh, that says that the very idea, some models, and some practices of leadership are quite bad. Uh, while doing so, I will while doing so, I will I will use uh, my unpublished paper or a study or an essay, in fact, written in a somewhat postmodern style. Uh, and this this is the, the paper. I don't know if it's visible. It. Let's see. Uh, yeah, there's the paper. So it says. Uh, it says. The uh, Untergang of the One Redeeming Leader Under the Iron Sky, and the subtitle. Subtitle is uh, Genealogical Research of the Origins and Harmfulness of Führer lighter cliches in the 20th century leadership practices and a bit of theory with illustrations from cinematography or are multinational CEOs guilty res ipsa locator. Now uh, I'm using here one, two, three, four, four, four motors for, for this uh, study but I would like to quote only the, only the, for the last one uh, author, author is unknown. Not surprising at all. There is a significant difference between a leader and a cheerleader. So this is the important thing to know before one starts to, to study uh, management and, and leadership techniques and managing techniques, theories. Okay. Now this this that Untergang of the one redeeming leader under the iron sky is available on script uh, as a draft of a paper so anybody interested uh, in a paper could read this 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 I don't know which perhaps fourth fourth version of or fifth version of, of, of the paper but still it isn't finished it's too long it's too complicated and the idea is unclear so really I don't know what why Am I talking about this topic because I don't think that I really know what I want to say about it. However, perhaps, uh, perhaps a kind of explication of 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 uh, idea in this early stage of of research uh, could be helpful to listeners. Okay. Uh, the whole paper is is separated in uh, I don't know how many four parts, and uh, each of these is separated on two sub two subsections. So four sections, and, uh, and each section has uh, two subsections. Now. Uh, let me start with the motive and with a summary 
uh, of, of the previous previous uh, note. In previous note, I explicated the corporate social irresponsibility of uh, mostly of employees, but uh, of of buyers and customers, and in some small, small, small uh, way only of management in general, but uh, uh, only as far as as, as it concerns uh, and it in, in sense in which it is related to the responsibilities of employees, buyers, consumers, etc. Now we will switch perspectives. We 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 only we only. Hinted that in some way the majority of responsibility lies on, on, on management, low, medium, and high uh, levels of management. And uh, so we should turn to this, this, this idea of, of a manager, the, the, more precisely, the idea of a leader. Now, uh, I'm not so comfortable with this idea because I found it uh, quite uh, disturbing for various reasons, some of which are uh, the, the concept itself and uh, perhaps the motive as well for, for, for thinking about this. Uh, but the concept in the first place, in the first place the concept itself seems to be inconsistent. Uh, why I will show later on. One of the elements of inconsistency uh, comes from, uh, in a way, continuing, continuing mm, series of misunderstandings of, of, of the very concept. Uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, between some um, non-business. Uh, uh, versions of the concept, uh, especially from from um, sports, from uh, sports terminology and phenomenology, from military terminology and phenomenology, etc. Uh, these ideas are, so to say, without any changes, imported into business theories. Okay, there are much, 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 much investigations, much research, much analysis uh, of, of, of the phenomenon and of the practices and of the techniques and of models of leadership in the recent literature, especially in the last 50, 60 years. So, therefore, we have a kind of uh, background theory about it, which concerns mostly, uh, in, fact, in fact, psychological or uh, research or research in in field of applied psychology, some kind of background which which is uh, similar to say background uh, theoretical background of <coughs> uh, in, in consumer studies uh, consumer behavior which is also a kind of kind of applied psychology social psychology. Uh, series of topics in, in this particular field. Uh, now, this, this inconsistency in the concept uh, is, is very disturbing. And this relation uh, of, from, of the concept to, 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 to these different concepts in different forms of human life, say in sports or in, in, in military activities. Uh, the manner in which I will present this thesis will be uh, in, only in part uh, it will be conceptual analysis and uh, a series of not so strict arguments but perhaps only some kind of framework of arguments, particular arguments against leadership in principle. Um, and uh, in part, uh, it would be uh, a description uh, of my personal organic development of particular premonition about harmfulness of any concept of, of a leader whatsoever, especially in the 20th century. Um, 
this hybrid methodology is used in order to 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 lead in order to lead uh, in order to lead uh, one toward some kind of understanding verstehen of the very phenomenon and the concept consistent concept of leadership now this difference uh, perhaps could be uh, could be emphasized if one points to the difference between leading leading by a leader of course or leaders and uh, being governed by a system now these two are, are opposite phenomena and opposite practices and opposite models and their application in fact there is no application there is no modeling in practice itself and the activity of modeling as my colleague Josip Lukin said there, there are no models outside of modeling modeling in itself manifests model something like that in science I'm not sure uh, so uh, this is one pair of opposite opposite phenomena okay I'm just making it opposite for the sake of discussion because leaders and systems are so opposite as they seem to be uh, on the other hand as one of my students uh, Stipe Buzar would say uh, when we discussed in Pinta Pub <coughs> on Tuesdays in our philosophical discussions in Zagreb uh, 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 he asked once, what is the difference between doors and gates? We were discussing some lyrics, uh, some, some rock bands, and after hours of, of metaphysical and linguistic, uh, linguistic analysis that, that, we, that we produced uh, uh, with the help of a lot of beer, uh, he came with a quite nice solution that can be used in this particular situation and uh, he said in fact uh, to the doors one enters however to the gates one is led now this is the difference uh, which uh, can be applied uh, concerning the present issue present topic uh, as far as it uh, uh, supplies uh, an interesting, an interesting facet of, 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 of the phenomenon in question. So, uh, it is not about that one should be led from one point to the other. It is about that a system or a standards of a series of standards of Practice, standard practices uh, gives one power to act without being led by anybody. So this is, this is another opposition, okay, which is still a part of my uh, motive. Uh, okay, uh, this this so-called postmodern part. Uh, uh, I owe generally to to my fascination with with films, so. Uh, the whole text is illustrated uh, with the carefully chosen examples from cinematography. Uh, I think that these examples aren't just examples, they are kind of prototypes, perhaps even models or, or, or paradigmatic cases. Uh, I'm reading it now, what I've written, that why the filming aspect express this basic premonition that there is something essentially wrong with the idea of leadership. Uh, on the other hand, they are uh, used neither in order to make some kind of popular philosophy of leadership that is so popular these days in terms of usage of various films in order to popularize, uh, uh, in most cases, non-philosophical ideas, nor in order to explicate alleged implicit leadership theory that lies under the surface of these films which in most cases isn't there or wasn't intended as being there by directors or scriptwriters. 
their paradigmatic nature of these films that I will mention consists in effect, at least I think that it consists in effect, that they are strictly speaking filming aspects of particular leadership understanding and as such they don't lack any kind of theoretical background or intellectual over-interpretation. They simply mark an artistic aspect of overlapping space between leadership philosophy and leadership cinematography that cannot be achieved by film or by science alone, and therefore an authentic useful interspheres art science overlap as well. An overlap that can perhaps and perhaps should serve as an appropriate background and rough ground of the present issue. Now, uh, when I'm thinking uh, uh, talking about this bad leadership practices during the 20th century, uh, I have a, a very particular period in mind, namely uh, from 1918 to 1989. Uh, in, in this period, these ideas about leadership were created. And also uh, the empirical and scientific conceptual uh, research of them started. Uh, So, concerning this, this series of, of features that are uh, thought to be necessary uh, for a leader to possess in order to, 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 to be a good leader, uh, were, were explicated in this period. And I think that uh, the recent history of the 21st century, and from, uh, I mean, from 1989 onwards, uh, showed that uh, this is not so. Uh, the practice of leadership simply goes against these theoretical uh, results or scientific results or results of research of leadership. So, uh, opposite to the idea that I should conduct a similar research um, in order to contradict these results, which, which was done by a, a, a lot of uh, young young researchers in the field. I will mention some, and some quite uh, old and experienced guys. And I will also mention uh, uh, some guys that, that uh, defend an opposite, quite opposite uh, standpoint, that says that uh, leaders are no important at all, systems of governance are important. But this is not the basic idea. The basic idea that uh, we need to, to show some uh, another possible approach to this criticism. And the possible approach is in fact half cynical, half ironic and uh, parody style approach to the issue. Uh, okay. Uh, so, perhaps history showed that, that recent history showed that there is nothing innate or even nurtured in there, just a little bit of motivation, positive emotions, and affluence and opportunities and troubles by which almost anybody can turn into a short term leader. And if this doesn't produce fear in all those that have faith in their powers that they can control communities by social engineering and experiment, it should eleva elevate some tremble. Uh, recent uh, uh, social movements, uh, uh, in my opinion, gave uh, kind of birth to a strange capacity in people uh, to, to, to suffer an ultimate sacrifice for a quite unknown cause. And this is important uh, because uh, uh, such no name but highly intelligent and incorporated threat by such masses uh, showed that it does not want, doesn't want to repeat mistake of its ancestors or as it was so elegantly put by Friedrich Nietzsche in Etzehoma and by Ludwig Wittgenstein in the big typescript. Namely, uh, Nietzsche said, I erect no idols. Let the old ones learn what it means to have feet of clay. 
And uh, Wittgenstein in Big TypeScript said, all philosophy can do is to destroy idols. And that means not create a new ones, for instance, as in the absence of an idol. So what I'm pointing here at is uh, simply uh, toward uh, destroying an idol, nothing, nothing more, nothing less. And uh, perhaps not destroying it, but showing the funny way how to do it. Funny way how to do it. So the first part uh, is called links. I will explain this this uh, section titles uh, at the end. So what does it mean? Uh, it means it, uh, what does it mean? It means links. It's German. Uh, and the first subsection, as I said, uh, each section is divided in, into two subsections. Is initial hunch about the half harmfulness of a leader. Now uh, the whole idea is to start with uh, some kind of. Uh, some kind of nice scene which shows uh, the phenomenon itself, the phenomenon of leadership. So, I'm reading it now. <coughs> While picturing Robbie Krieger's hypnotic sound of a guitar, an apocalyptic sight of Palm Grove burned down by Napa bombs, verses of James Douglas Morrison, aka Jim. This is the end, my grateful friend. This is the end, my only friend, the end. And the words of Colonel Kurtz, played by Marlon Brando coming from a tape recorder <coughs> and the words run as follows I watch a snail crawling on the edge of a razor that's my dream, that's my nightmare I had a hunch that the practice and the concept of the one and solitary leader figure in leadership theory and practice of 21st century is a miserable residuum of modern understanding of a human in brackets bloody uh, collective actions and individual responsibilities throughout the whole 20th century and that in such it is nothing else but plainly and straightforwardly harmful. Now, in fact, this, uh, this sentence uh, uh, by Manon Brando is, uh, is pointing, is, is an iron because uh, imagine a snail crawling on the edge of a race this is something that is quite impossible uh, for a human to do. Uh, and not to cut him or herself, say with a hand, with a palm. But in fact, uh, snails do that all the time. So it's possible for them to, 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 to crawl on the edge of the razor and, and you not know, to cut themselves in half and say, hmm, okay. So what he's saying, he wants to be like a snail, he wants to do that, but he can't. And now, uh, the principal idea is that leaders are thought of as being uh, unique persons and special humans. Uh, First feature is that leader can be only one, really. This is important. Only one can lead, not three or four, or, or a large group, or a sovereign nation cannot lead itself. So one leader. Uh, and uh, next feature, quite important feature, is that the leader is redeeming. Uh, he's a kind of rescuer, he's a kind of liberator he leads to freedom. This is important. You cannot lead yourself into freedom. You need a leader. Uh, but concerning at least these basic features of, of leaders, it should be said that some amount of, perhaps not critical, but still some amount of criticism with uh, quite conclusive arguments showed that this is really ideology, nothing more than ideology or even mythology. A series of legends about, about, about leaders, about par particular cases of, of leading, especially in business. Uh, this fear of criticism of, of this general leadership ideas in business 
can be divided into internal and external criticism. Uh, by internal criticism, uh, I mean criticism that comes uh, from the very culture that uh, invented 20th century leadership, uh, namely uh, United States culture. Uh, and, of course, the criticism that comes from uh, managerial sciences. Uh, perhaps works such as Noam Chomsky's Profitable Power, Neoliberalism and Global Order, 1999, and Dan Hauser's The Relationship Between Servant Leadership, uh, Follower Trust, Team Commitment and uh, Unit Effectiveness, uh, uh, Doctoral Dissertations from 2007, should be mentioned in such discussions. External criticism, on the other hand, I understand as the criticism that comes from other cultures, most notably from uh, European cultures and uh, Asiatic cultures. In terms of different management theories and leadership practices, some of which I mentioned. Uh, but a series of criticism can be derived from quite crazy works which that are not strictly speaking related to the topic <coughs> excuse me from the Harry Frankfurt's on bullshit 2005 from Sutton's uh, no asshole rule 2007 and some uh, similar works for instance, Sutton uh, writes about assholes at various workplaces, formalizes the criteria, and supplies two tests for asshole detection. There are 12 assholes features, and he calls them the dirty dozen, with uh, obvious, again, allusion uh, to Robert Aldrich's film of the same title from 1967. Uh, I will not, for now, I will not discuss uh, models which deny leadership and promote uh, systems of governance, such as some practices and some models of leadership done by Germans and Japanese business people following particular business models. Uh, Or rather, I will turn to the comparison of how leaders act and uh, how they should act. Uh, how they should act. Uh, let me quote uh, four uh, 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 known, known dicta. Uh, the first I already quote, there is a significant uh, difference between a leader and a cheerleader. And the second is by Lhatse. <clears throat> a leader is best when people barely know that he exists. And then Antoine de, de Saint-Exupéry, uh, chief is a man who assumes responsibility. He says, I was beaten. He does not say, my men were beaten. And the last one, the fourth one, Kelly, remember the difference between a boss and a leader. A boss says, go. A leader says, let's go. Now, how compared to this, this how leaders should behave? If we want the concept of a leader to be consistent, but then it leads, that leaders, leads to the conclusion that leaders aren't leaders at all. They're just part of, of well well, systematic machine. Uh, how do they really behave? Uh, let's say, let, let's mention a few names. This is nice. Dick Fold, Lehman Brothers, 1994 to 2008. Angela Mozilla, Countywide Financial, 1998 to 2008. Uh, Jimmy Kenyon, Bear Stearns, 1993 to 2008. Ken Lay, Enron. 1986-2002. Jack Welch, General Electric, 1981-2001. Al Dunlop, Sunbeam, 1996-1998. Roger Smith, General Motors, 1981-1990. Uh, 
you can research these examples for yourself and see for yourself how they let their people, their business, what they did and in which way they manifested their beautiful leadership skills. Um, now, let us turn to some kind of genealogy of a leader or a leadership phenomenon. I'm turning to the second subsection of the third part, which is called links. Uh, and title is leaders as our high heroes and role models. Uh, now, where do the idea of a leader comes from? Well, there are various sources and there are various hypotheses uh, where do these uh, ideas, perhaps different ideas, in fact, come from, and they uh, the convergent ideas, they, they, they point to, 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 to each other, to the same direction. Perhaps not completely, there are divergent uh, ideas as well, different features of various sources, but perhaps there is some hint of a general main pattern of leadership phenomenon. First of all, there is a kind of uh, there is a kind of idea that the leader uh, or leaders are real, real people, real men, with real tasks and real features of, of, of which makes them leaders. Now there are various uh, uh, various. Uh, categories here. Now, in history, most of it comes from but some kind of strange connection between gods and men, humans, you know. You have, on the side of the gods, you have some kind of half-gods, which are half-gods, half-humans, or superhumans, like superheroes. And on, of, of, from on the side of, of humans, you have some kind of heroes, is a kind of heroes with, with, with divine uh, features, divine capability, divine powers even, or heroes that were significantly uh, helped by a strange or unknown divine uh, forces during their, their, their struggle for, for, for some particular goal. Okay. Now, uh, since in, in Europe we have this, this Greek idea of, of a beginning, uh, we should, in principle, turn to first and foremost turn to, to the Greek ideas of, of, of a hero, which is quite simple. The heroes are, uh, in first, uh, in the most important sense, uh, they are they are warriors, great warriors, great generals, great, great leaders of, of great armies that won great battles. Uh, afterwards, the idea of a leader was mixed with the idea of a democratic leader. And finally, perhaps even some kind of uh, humanities leader, such as Socrates. But uh, this idea of... Uh, so, one can say that perhaps in the Greek world there was some kind of development or even progress from the idea of a, of a leader as a half half uh, God, half human, then to, to half human with divine uh, powers, and then to uh, complete humans, only humans, uh, but quite brave and quite rational, and, and etc. Leaders like, like, like uh, generals, and then democratic leaders, and then in fact philosophers and Greek as leaders. And Socrates' example is quite nice, because when faced with that penalty, uh, due to a series of accusations that were quite serious, uh, he was faced with, uh, with a dilemma. Uh, he had two possibilities. Uh, the first was to, to drink the poison and uh, consequently to die, to, to commit a, a suicide. And uh, the other possibility was to be, was to be expelled from, from his homeland and perhaps even from all the Greek cities Therefore, the possibility to, to move to another uh, uh, 
city-state was, was not the, the real possibility. Uh, because the real possibility was to move outside of the uh, Greek work in general. And uh, he, uh, uh, he chose the possibility to drink the poison and commit suicide. Now, this is thought of as being quite brave and, 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 and a quite elegant way and, and rational way to, to, to decide and to act. However, perhaps he was a coward, in fact, because uh, uh, what is the, another possibility? Another possibility says that you will be expelled, dear, or dear Socrates, you will be expelled from the Greek world without the possibility of returning to it. So, the possibility, the reality in this case for Socrates uh, would be something like, yes, you will end like a slave, most probably, and uh, being a slave for Socrates is, was not just, as far as I know, and some, some authors uh, discuss this democratic hero as, as, as a Socratic ideal, or vice versa, and vice versa. Uh, so, it is not so much about being a slave. It is, uh, in a way, these alternatives were, were, were simple, being dead and being slave. So Socrates thought it's better to be dead than to be a slave. Why? What is it? What, what is so 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 awful? So 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 unimaginable in, in being a slave? Well, uh, for one thing, uh, he couldn't imagine to leave his friends, his family, his his beloved state, his students. But perhaps the, his choice was even even much simpler than that. Uh, I'm reading it now. It seems that he dies as a free man, because if he commits suicide, he it, it, it's, it was his choice. Uh, so his termination of his life was his choice, his act, and he could choose to 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 end as a slave. And without possibility of returning to the Greek world, and therefore uh, he would die not as a free man, but as a slave. And what does it mean? What, what it meant, supposedly, for him to, 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 to end up as a slave? Well, uh, he would probably die not even, even not as Athenian, not as a Greek, perhaps not as a human being. Being a slave is similar to being a non-human being. He would, he would not be a human, a Greek or a Tenian. This, this was unimaginable for him to end like that. So, was he acting as a true leader uh, that leads by example, who leads by example, or as a coward, in fact, because he couldn't bear the fact that uh, he could continue to live, but not even as a human. He would be regarded perhaps as a kind of enemy. So it depends on various, uh, various, uh, various uh, uh, emperors around the Greek, how they threatened, threatened, treated their slaves and the levels of slavery. Okay, this is it. This is technicalities. Um, now, let us skip to the to the modern uh, concept of leader. Well, uh, I must emphasize that this Greek idea of, of a leader, of a hero, which uh, uh, is incorporated in the 20th century idea of, of a leader, isn't the only one. Uh, uh, there are a lot of different ideas that also uh, barbaric, as, uh, as, as it were, barbaric ideas that are also incorporated in this idea of contemporary leader. Uh, but the very, the very Greek word hero uh, was taught to to mean a warrior, a warrior, simply a warrior. But strictly speaking, it means something 
quite not uh, not quite as as a hardcore leader feature, a protector, or as a one who defends a protector. Leader is a protect. Hero is a protector, not a leader. So a leader in ancient Greek had a, a relevant social and political role because. He, by his deeds that are heroic, protects the nation and because he is a special, in quite special relation to gods, directly or indirectly. <coughs> and this is what raises him above others. Okay. Uh, Hegel described a hero, sometimes even real persons, such as Napoleon, as one who expresses the spirit of a nation, Volkgeist spirit of a nation, and the spirit of time, zeitgeist. While, for instance, Carla described heroes as great men that can bring decisive change. Until 20th century, kings, knights, saints, scientists, and artists became dubious for their heroic nature. 20th century gives a nice example of radical change of these leader features. From 1918 to 1945, there was there were real heroes that won the great battle against great evil. From 1945 to 1989, many hero categories and hero features uh, derived from particular cases become suspicious, such as warriors, especially after Korea and Vietnam Wars. After 1989 and the fall of communism, there were no more political heroes. So who then? Uh, the only candidates were business people and great CEOs. Uh, yet, their huge professional misconducts, irrational business decisions and actions, and after all, their causing of economic, environmental, and social crisis, raised many eyebrows. Therefore, they are represented as real heroes, even in the newest serious analysis. Real heroes. This will be uh, uh, really a thing for a serious discussion. Uh, it is sufficient to compare eulogies to ancient Greek heroes with the text about great CEOs in most popular business magazines worldwide. I'm just reading it now. Nevertheless, reality says something different. So the world is left with only few options. It can abandon the leader idea altogether, or we can try with some other stratum. The last postmodern attempt was to create leader idea as incarnated in small people, any one of us. Perhaps this shows that humans need heroes no matter how irrational this need can become. Uh, uh, perhaps there is another uh, reason for, for endurance and per perdurance of the hero idea. Uh, a reason, such reason can be found in transcultural uh, characteristics or features of heroes. A hero is cold or he feels a cold and he starts a strange voyage. Along the way, he bumps at various obstacles and creatures, and he resolves, resolves, resolves them all. In most cases, with little help from unknown forces that show him some admiration due to his motivation and, after all, his sacrifice, personal sacrifice. At the end, he is glorified by mortals and by gods. He marries a princess, and he influences our historical developments. Now they are around. 150 multinational in the world, multinational companies in the world plus minus five. One can be surprised concerning brands they own, so they directly determine on their lives. So, what do CEOs do concern? Uh, what is do concerns us? Yet, no one knows are they really qualified for the job. What one must know that and know how, believe that and believe in and what kind of deeds one must perform in order to be qualified for such a strange job. Nobody knows. This, this mystical element is, is quite important. So we can, we can, we can create mythology around, around the particular, each and every particular phenomenon of a great business leader. So the first static element of a leader mythology is already present, presence, namely lack of any transparency whatsoever. Uh, there are, okay, various kind of uh, heroes, 
developed throughout history. So we have a romantic hero, we have a, uh, like Edmond Dantes, uh, also known as Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, we have a tragic hero, uh, and of course uh, we have a contemporary superhero, uh, such as Batman, Superman, etc. And some of the irony concerning the superheroes was, uh, in fact, very nicely presented in uh, an animated uh, film by Bird, 2004, uh, uh, Incredibles. Uh, sometimes a series of features are added to this basic basic model of, of a hero, of a leader as a hero, depending on the differences uh, within uh, historic periods, the differences in cultures, differences in uh, particular social situations. So we have ancient Greek heroes, Roman emperors and warriors, medieval Christian saints, modern scientists, postmodern heroes of aestheticism, etc. etc. Uh, concerning the cultural background, can, uh, heroes can be divided as Roman, German, Slavic, Anglo-Saxon, Japanese, Chinese, Indian, Arab, Arabic, etc. But a particular pattern of uh, phenomenon of a leader as a hero is in fact manifested in various forms, most notably in the form of fairy tale. And this was uh, investigated uh, by Prop, for instance, a classical text. Uh, this morphology of a fairy tale presents us with a particular pattern of a hero that contributed substantively uh, to the idea of a leader, especially to the idea and the practice and the model of a business leader throughout the 20th century. Perhaps uh, uh, a nice example, especially concerning the, the fact that the uh, new Pope of Roman Catholic uh, Church, New Pope, uh, was Jesuit, is Jesuit. <coughs> Perhaps the examples of, of uh, Jesuits as leaders should, should, also, should also be mentioned, uh, especially from uh, Chris Lowney's book, Heroic Leadership. Uh, he, he, emphasizes, he emphasizes um, four features that are not so, 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 so present in contemporary business theories about leadership. Namely, these are self-understanding, meaning understanding, uh, I'm reading it, understanding one's own advantages and disadvantages, ingenuity, in innovativeness, and acceptance of sudden changes. Third, love, meaning a general positive attitude toward others, and, of course, heroism. Heroism is quite important. Meaning empowerment of themselves and others by great ambitions. Uh, these features, if combined, create a particular idea of servant leadership, which was not invented by management theory. It was, in, it was uh, manifested by Jesus himself, because his idea was, and his practice was, to, to lead by serving. Now, this is quite complicated. I will try to present you with some kind of table. So this is the table. Okay. This is a reversed uh, triangle. So uh, above up is subordinates and teacher is down. And now sub subordinates are learning from a teacher and teacher is teaching subordinates. Teacher is learning from subordinates and teacher teaches the subordinates. So teacher has dual function. Teacher as a subordinate and teacher as a superior in the same time, by the same act. So this is a leadership model of a reverse uh, pyramid. 
Uh, now I don't want to enter into various mode of models of leadership. I will try to skip this and I will turn to the second second part, which is called swap. First subsection features of a leader, uh, some of which were already mentioned, at least the essential ones. Uh, now, uh, this should be explicated in, in a more uh, cynical and ironic way because uh, why are these features of a leader needed? Uh, the leader must be one, the leader must be, uh, must be uh, our savior, etc. So, those who are led by a leader, what is their nature? Why do they need a leader? This is important. Uh, I will read a few sentences just to, uh, just to uh, give some kind of hint what I'm talking about. The first part of the hunch was about one and uh, the other leader, and it's such, and it is such because he she isn't just one among many. He she is the one irreplaceable. He she creates destinies of subordinates. Before him or her, there was darkness. Sits rule the world, and now we shall have peace. But he she brought the light of the force of the Jedi Knights, like in Lucas' Star Wars. It described a good leader, like a good shepherd, who knows those allegedly wild, disintegrated, and mutually confronted, saves those allegedly weak, sinful, and ruined, as sheep of his future flock from their tragic destiny, like Kurtz or like Muad'Dib in Dune by David Lynch. Yet his own destiny is tragic comical because, and sad because if the flock believes that it needs a leader, then it would believe anything else. Uh, at this particular moment, the illusion is complete and the flock will believe what, whatever a leader says. The irony is that such a leader is without a character. He, she is a procedural mal malfunction of a social system of a company. Now, it is not, it isn't clear who she is becomes and when it becomes a, a, a tragic character. It's possible that the good flock functions as a well oiled machine and the leader starts to feel that he she is a good, yet redundant as a function and via that a tragic character. At the end he she starts to do and to give irrational and essentially stupid assignments, transforms from a zombie into a zimbo, a kind of evil shepherd and becomes a comical hero, finally. Uh, arguments against the leader as a key function institution in the human body with a series of brilliant innate and mystical features, in fact, against Führer, the word is in German change from Führer to Leiter, uh, because the first word was stigmatized. As a key legal person, within legal person are the following. Now, there is nothing, nothing which any person has as a prerequisite to become a leader. So, leaders are not born, humans are born. And leaders uh, learn how to lead by other good leaders. Okay? What is the idea? The idea is 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 that uh, the leader, as well as a group, has a kind of special belief, belief in, not belief that, but belief in. A leader believes in himself or herself, in the same way as a group believes in itself before it starts to act as a group. This, this kind of belief in as a prerequisite of, of uh, even trying to achieve any collective result in the case of a group can be similarly uh, uh, explicated in the case of a leader. And this was in fact uh, concerning the group. This was uh, uh, explicated by William James in his uh, Will to Believe, a very quite famous essay. And now, uh, this leads to, uh, if leaders are not born, this leads to this problem of transfer of leadership techniques and, and practices and, and models. 
Now, how a leader is initiated, how it is, how he or she becomes a leader. Of course, another older leader, like a king, with a crown, a young king, or a young prince becomes a king, something like that. There is some kind of procedure, some kind of some kind of run. <coughs> okay, but uh, this whole cultural context is, isn't so important because it's high as the essence and the essence says that uh, there is no such thing there is no such thing uh, now what leaders do so we are turning to their actions there as any other people they are using power all all uh, power that they can use, uh, all the modes of power, and by doing so, they are not different from other people. So their actions are not are not uh, especially different from our own actions in our daily lives. The amount of responsibility is is also a dubious concept because. Uh, this isn't a real argument. Well, this isn't a real argument. Leaders are just a kind of tourist guides, <coughs> or they should at least they should be. Uh, now let's skip a lot of it and turn to the second subsection, the second part, part four. Do all leader models deny starting conditions of leading? Well. Uh, there are various ways to 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 uh, separate, to divide, to distinguish between a series of models of leadership and the idea of of a lonesome, lonely leader, which who is capable of doing everything by himself or herself, is in fact as a starting condition self-contradictory. Why? Why? Uh, why? They are not eccentric scruples after all. Sometimes this helps and sometimes not. The metaphor, uh, metaphor of a lonely, fearless eccentric uh, as a leader as a leader is inconsistent because such people don't want to lead anybody. For example, uh, Max Rakansky, Mel Gibson, and Mad Max Miller, 1979. In fact, we have here an idea of an anti-hero. Uh, like characters played by Clint Eastwood in Trilogy Man with No Name, Sergio Leone, 1964 to 1966. Or in these days, like Mickey Rourke in Sin City, Miller and Rodriguez, 2005. So one is left, if, if a leader is not a lonely, eccentric guy or a girl, uh, who creates his practices, uh, then he must be a part of a, a part of a kind of group. So a group, in fact, verifies and uh, gives some kind of certificate of legitimacy and legality to a leader, not older leader and doing some kind of mystical initiation of a young leader, a young apprentice becomes a Jedi. Uh, so there are three, three, three logical possibilities concerning uh, the, the relation. Now, if, if a leader is a part of a group, then uh, essential uh, for understanding the basic feature of a leader is the, his or her relation to the group. Three possibilities are uh, in mentioned in many cases, and these are um, the following. One over many. This is hierarchical and totalitarian egoistic model, in fact. First among many, this is democratic, populist, utilitarian model, and last among many, uh, already mentioned, uh, altruistic servant model. Uh, any of these models doesn't imply anything of uh, leader in it. Uh, one is right if one hears, uh, uh, one is right if when one hears about born leaders and innate leader virtues. One has a Gregory Peck-like face and would like to start to cut future leaders' hair in order to check 
does he or she or doesn't he or she has a strange but clear sign on his head C E O uh, like uh, Peggy, uh, really did in Omen uh, by Donner, uh, 1976. There are only difficulties and opportunities that makes one a leader, nothing in it. Okay, and I'll skip again. Now, uh, leaders uh, are sometimes credited with a feature that or capacity to solve particular problems, practical problems, in much effective way than other members of a group. Now, this isn't really true, because problem solvers uh, are rarely good leaders, even practical problem solvers. They simply hit have the ideas how to solve the problem and sometimes they can even solve the problems themselves but that doesn't make them a leader because a leader by the very definition doesn't just solve the problem by solving the problem he achieves something different something different and this is not what problem solvers do they just solve the problem they don't uh, uh, manifest anything by solving the problem. They don't want to do anything more. They don't want to lead. They don't want to produce consequences. They just solve the practical problem. Leaders, in most cases, use problem solvers for and credit their, their achievements to themselves as, as if they solved the problem, but they didn't, in fact. There is an army of people that does things for them, among which are the problem solvers as well. Okay, uh, and now I'm turning to the third part, which is called dry. Do you get the idea? Things for dry. The first subsection is a leader as a savior and a liberator. Now, if a leader used a problem solver in order to help him to solve a practical problem, now, a problem solver, sol uh, solver solves the problem, okay? A leader uses this, this, this uh, solution, practical solution of the practical problem, and what a leader does is quite important. He, present, he presents himself or herself as being a savior or a liberator of a kind because only a guy who solves this kind of problem and supplies a kind of practical relief to the community, only such guy or such thing can be done by only a guy who is a real savior. Because by doing that, solving a practical problem, problem, a leader really saved the flock, the community, the society, a company corporation. And this is the idea. And uh, more to that, by saving uh, a community, a leader, uh, in a way, liberates them, gives them new opportunities, give them, gives them uh, an advantage over the other groups. So this is important for a leader, is this whole, this whole, this whole storytelling about 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 a simple solution or simple practical problem nothing more this is the essence ah okay Kubrick's and the Kubrick's Pensodice blah 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 I will skip that David Bowman oh this is nice mm. what was I talking about David Bowman in Space Odyssey. Ah, ah, in order to point that, that in fact, uh, uh, David Bowman, uh, the astronaut, uh, who was presented as a leader uh, when he switched off or killed Hal, uh, a kind of 
who, how, who is a, a representation of a system instead of a leader. System of governance is a real leading power behind everything, not a particular human being as a leader. And this, this, this very subtle change of aspect in Kubrick, in Kubrick's Space Odyssey, uh, uh, presents very nice illustration. Because I will read, so contemporary humans are in middle space between two direction processes. Uh, on one hand, in the process, as the one of the Austrian David Bowman in 2001, Space Odyssey, who gradually loses all his human-like features, in fact, little features, and at the end resembles more to a machine than to a human being, and acts completely insensitively. On the other hand, humans are in the process, as the computer Hall 9000, in the same film, is, who gradually, Hall, I mean, uh, becomes more and more human and humane, in fact, and begs, now uh, at the end, completely dehumanized David, who switches him off or kills him. Please, Dave, please, Dave, don't kill me, Dave. And at the end, sings the song as one of the first things that he was taught uh, uh, slower and slower and finally, uh, in fact, dies. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do I'm half and crazy or, or uh, and he dies. Okay. In the middle space, almost as crucified, a human of 21st century is left uh, on his or her own and the only solution is to become a kind of self-leader. However, he, he or she doesn't know how to, doesn't know where or when, and then this slower and slower circular, in fact circular, uh, a crucifixion starts to produce more and more irrational solutions among which the concept of a life coach is among the top ten. This is really completely crazy idea. A life coach. What does this mean? Uh, this is a coach that coaches us in a sport called life. Each day in a new is a new match. Each day we hope to win. Each day he strive to be at the top, no matter how comical the whole situation may look like. After medicine men or primordial shamanistic religions, priests of all great religions in the past, confessors in Christianity, psychoanalysts in postmodernism, a life coach appears because the human within us, human within us as machines, forgot an ancient technique of self questioning. Self questioning that should be credited as a method to Socrates. Again, return to Socrates. Self search, self evaluation of our daily action, or what Jesuit called uh, examine. Even the simple art of self help. Now let me turn to the uh, uh, second, uh, second sub part of the third part toward the solution leadership as a self knowledge. But here I will be quite short because I don't have really the idea. Really the idea, the idea of self knowledge as leadership. Yes, this is in fact the most important thing that I, I'm trying to point to. Uh, SWOT analysis, so it's an extent, weaknesses, etc., of ourselves is the good starting point. And then one, each and every one of us, is capable of acting as a rational, normal, human being and to lead him or herself toward any daily goal. We don't need any kind of leaders anyway. Systems will do the rest procedures as if as similar as in our personal life habits function as a systems. So systems in a companies should function as habits in our daily life. They govern the process as as well as habits are govern processes in our daily lives. Simply that's it. Some kind of simple analogy. 
Uh, so I'm turning to the, after the link so dry, I'm turning to the fear. Fear, fear uh, is a fourth part, uh, which is separated again in two subsections. The first is unpleasant and dark but instructive German experience. And now this part that I will read, and this is in fact the end of this uh, remark. In the domain of cinematography, now I'm skipping all these previously mentioned films, the relation of Germans toward their perhaps not the greatest, yet surely the darkest leader, Adolf Hitler, is the brightest example. So every human of the 21st century, we humans of the 21st century, uh, by the German model should be, should go through first the step of self-glorification is a mature autonomous being like incredible image of a leader in Leni Riefenstahl's Triumph des Willens 1934 and of admitting personal weaknesses, limitations and mistakes. Then, second, the step of critical assessment and evaluation and distancing from him herself like in the image of a leader in Wolfgang Spetersen's Das Boot, 1981, and of preserving one's advantages, forces and strengths. And finally, third step, in the light or, in fact, in the darkness, of the results of previous steps, the step of acknowledging him or herself as an average, fallible human being, and yet capable of being a leader depending on opportunities and difficulties, motives and adaptability, like the image of a leader in Oliver Hirschbiegel's film Der Untergang. And this is uh, connected to the title. So Hirschbiegel, uh, 2004. Hitler was a capable leader, clear, effective, efficient and influential. But was he good? It seems that the answer is obvious, as claimed in uh, Kellerman, 2006. So nobody is a leader, and anybody can, anybody can become a leader. And we, on a daily basis, we become leaders. And, and cease to be, and we start and stop to be leaders. Day in, day out, that's it. And opportunity is what transforms one into a leader. However, the general objection is the following. If any one of us is a potential leader, then no one is necessarily one and the only redeeming or liberating. Leader. That, then we are all potential leaders, and what transforms us in actual leaders is essentially beyond our control. In most cases, simple circumstances or small changes in our environment. Now, let me show just these two uh, covers for, for these two films that I was talking about. So, uh, uh, these are the, these are the movies, Three of the Sweden's, The Sport, and, and uh, The Pentagon. So the whole issue is overblown in some completely relevant purposes, which by being recognized also become the subject of solitary suspicion, irony and cynicism. Mobsters are watching Godfather films, Francis Ford Coppola, 72, 74, 1990, believing that it is the right way to act professionally, in fact. Uh, information is supplied by a reliable source concerning uh, some members of uh, domestic mafia. Uh, similarly, business people are watching Wall Street, uh, Stone, uh, 1987. Protesters are watching YouTube and their co-workers around the globe. All of them believe in their liberating and leading roles, that they are only ones who could do the job right, that before them is that before before them it was dark and that they bring the light to the rest of the world. Uh, forgetting what uh, looks fair is or Lucifer really means in Latin. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, uh, or as uh, uh, was nicely uh, hinted by uh, Robert De Niro uh, in his role of Louis Cipher, which is Louis Cipher, Louis Cipher, Lucifer, in uh, Angel Angel Heart on Dark Eighty Seven, especially this dialogue when. Um, uh, De Niro asked uh, Rocky, uh, uh, you know that in some religions the egg is a symbol of the soul, well, getting out the egg, uh, 
And the rookie says, no, I don't know. Would you like an egg? The dealer asks. Okay. Uh, only the real strong but righteous leader can bread souls into the zombie bodies of subordinates and corporations. And they can rise again like phoenix from ashes and move move on to the new working victories. However, this is a myth. The reality says that the leader in business is here to lay off his workers and to transform them into social zombies. They become socially dead. Dead completely. Uh, social. And himself into the great cost cutter. Now, the second uh, uh, aspect, the second subsection of this fear part is in fact called links. So, Again, links to our drive via links. I hope that sufficiently I said concerning my starting hunch. Perhaps it is not explicated sufficiently clear. Clearly, perhaps not sufficiently justified, but at least a reader knows what I was aiming at. I hope that the concept and practices of the one only and redeeming leader will vanish. In fact, extinct from the management theory and practice, because things do not simply go away. You know, rather they need to die or need to be removed, decapitated, perhaps, or similar, depending on the level of, uh, of course, as, as always, uh, technological advancement. So guillotine was then, and nowadays we have new methods. The best thing is to forget that this whole issue and all our leaders past ever existed. On the other hand, perhaps this is more deeply rooted in our personal histories, in the history of Homo sapiens sapiens. Perhaps it looked like an archetype and it cannot be removed, then I suppose we are doomed. Now, I must turn to the second series of, of films, and not uh, from uh, German uh, cinematography, but referring to the topic by all means. And this is the series of the films, namely uh, Charlie Chaplin, The Great Dictator, Vorisola, Iron Sky, and Fatherland. Um, uh, the film Iron Sky of Solar 2012 adds something to this list of paradigmatic leader features in cinematography, namely a parody. In fact, Nazi and Hitler films compose a strange subgenre, perhaps the only one in which we have examples of all major film genres and at the same time very important films from the film theory point of view. Therefore, the leaders is uh, the leader isn't just a human being with his unbelievable atrocities. In all that mess, he is also a comical character. Two moments should be emphasized here. One is the film, one is that uh, the film Iron Sky belongs both uh, to parody films about Nazis, a subgenre in which Charlie Chaplin's uh, The Great Dictator by, by, by is completely rightfully uh, at the top, and also to the general topic about Nazis, and on the, the other hand, under the subgenre of sci fi comedy. The connection is Riefenstahl's film, from which Chaplin took uh, many uh, elements such as Hitler's moves, facial expressions and speaking style. Another element of possible connection is the time. Chaplin made his film in 1940, year in which the world was faced by Hitler's apparently unstoppable actions and further plans. Iron Sky is released in 2012, in which Israel's strongly advanced uh, percussionary attack on uh, Iran and in which uh, Ginter Grass, only a month after the film premiere and uh, 62nd Berlin Inter International Film Festival, publishes poem discussion, what must be said. In fact, the poem was published on 4th April and the film was released in Germany on the 5th April. After picturing Hitler as a human being in the Untergang, this parody is important at least concerning the relation of Germans to Hitler. Uh, in the film, there is no clear attitude toward Nazis. Perhaps Iron Sky belongs with the film Fatherland, you know, uh, 1994, as well, uh, at least in terms of picturing alternative uh, future after the uh, World War II. So there is additional fourth step, cynicism, irony, and a good humor toward all leadership and leaders. In Iron Sky, there is a lot of humor, cynicism, and irony. Uh, but there is no significant attitude. This is important. The film says that explicit, explicit attitude toward Nazis do not matter anymore, that they are beside the point. All we can do is make fun of them. Also, the end of the film suggests something quite similar to the idea advanced by Grass. 
As such, this film strongly and decisively contributes to the mentioned disappearance of the whole idea, theory and practice of leadership and leading anyone anywhere. The point with German cinematography concerning leaders in the last almost 80 years is certain development that shows overall repulsion toward any leadership whatsoever. In the same time, in business practices, Germans and perhaps some other business clusters and uh, cultures, like perhaps Scandinavian and Japanese, developed, so to say, no leader business governance models that in practice made them world's leading business nations. In the first place, industrial nations. If these four steps, links for life here, uh, help that the idea of a leader disappears, then we can imagine that it will completely fade out with the appropriate iron ironical verses links for dry fear links uh, which is in fact uh, the lyrics of the song by Rammstein links for dry fear from their Muta album 2001 by which we clarified at first perhaps a bit unclear titles of sections in the present essay and perhaps it is interesting to mention that the band Rammstein is influenced among others also by the band Leibach that made the music for the Iron Sky, that it will fade this this strange, uh, completely inconsistent concept of a solitary one redeeming, liberating leader, with scene of an, an army that marches leaderless but as one, effectively, efficiently, with clear goal, mission, vision, and core values through the dark corridors of the end hill accompanied by the noisy guitars and drums. So, this was my uh, end of my essay and uh, draft for an essay and my criticism of uh, leadership. And what this has to do with CSI? Uh, first, because the concept of a leader is in itself contradictory. Uh, introducing leader in business is a responsible thing to do. And if introduced as a model or as a practice, then it's uh, further on, it's even more irresponsible. And then if such leaders act in a particular way, believing that they're doing something really important, this in most cases turn out, turns out to be as well, completely irresponsible. So, uh, this was a criticism of the concept of a leader as being inconsistent and therefore irresponsible thing to use in our thinking about, about business responsibilities because it ends up in a series of misconducts and corporate social irresponsibilities, in fact. And this was my last, uh, last, last, last remark concerning these general topics, which cover uh, CSI generally, then employee, and this third note was against leadership. And uh, I should mention that uh, in uh, further notes, remarks, uh, I will turn to not to the stakeholder groups such as employees or customers or buyers or managers or leaders, but toward the particular uh, socially irresponsible practices. Therefore, the following topic would be lying, and some new insights, perhaps interesting, should be shared. Thank you very much. This is the third note, the end of the third note. Thank you.